Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm so excited to be filming my spring TBR. I have split this video into cozy mysteries, thriller slash suspense, and then I have one random nonfiction I'll do at the end. So I'll have those sorted if you'd like to jump around. Let's hop into cozy mystery. Okay, so our first book is one that I've been holding off on specifically until spring summer because of the theme. And this is called Getting Old is the Best Revenge by Rita Lackins. And this is part of the Gladdy Gold Detective Agency Mystery series which my friend Tiffany Beachbum Bookworm introduced me to when we did our collaboration last year where we picked each other's TBRs. I'll link it above. I adored book one. It was amazing. It was such a funny, fresh, cozy mystery. So I bought book two, but I bought it during the winter and I've been waiting to read it for spring because it takes place on a cruise ship. So Gladdy and her girls, now that they have solved a murder in the first book, have opened their little detective agency and they are helping to solve murders of wives of like wayward husbands. And then they also win cruise, t like a bingo cruise tickets onto this cruise and they find the jackpot on there because there's a murderer for someone who's taking like care of that sort of thing. So I am so excited. Gladdy, this was such a fun, humorous, amazing, witty series, so I can't wait for book two in this. Another series I adore that I have been waiting to read this book for until spring was Trouble Over Breaded Water. This is by Winnie Archer, and I love the Breadshot Mystery series. It's what I'm hoping is continuing. I haven't seen announcements for another book after this. This is like book eight in the series and basically our main character is Ivy. She's a photographer. It takes place in Santa Sofia, California and she also works at a bread shop part time and the bread will make you so hungry. It's amazing descriptions. Really, really incredible. And in this one, her and her fiance are announcing their engagement, having like a party in the park and her pug, Agatha, finds a body and it's one of the regulars at the bread shop. And some salacious rumors are being spread about her boss, so she gets involved to clear her boss's name and to get to the bottom of what happened to this poor person. So I'm very excited for this. I love that there's a pug, Agatha, adorable, and the writing for this, it's just, it's, it's a little bit like deeper than your average cozy mystery. I feel like there's some really good depth to the emotional subplots in these. You have some really good like character moments. Some of the mysteries themselves can be a little bit darker as well. Not where they're not cozy, but just a little bit darker than your average. And I just really enjoy this series. It's really fun. One that I just picked up from my library is Beauty and the Deceased. A Resale Boutique Mystery by Deborah Senfielder. This is book four in the series, which I have been loving. And it takes place with the beach, and Kelly is a secondhand boutique owner. I really love her. She's very spunky. There's a lot of interesting family drama in this series, a lot of good subplots about her past and how she's growing as a person, which I love. And in this one, she's excited to be reunited with her cousin, who's actually running this like beauty cosmetics company, but their reunion is cut short, unfortunately, and Kelly is on the case trying to find the killer. Very excited for this. I love the covers for the series. They're just so fun. And there's a cute cat named Howard who is this grumpy, lovable orange furball. So I always love that. Um, one that was kindly sent to me that I'm really looking forward to reading because it looks very like spring summery is Dying to Go, Nothing to Gush About by Marcy Blessy. And this is part of the Tucson Valley Retirement Community Cozy Mystery Series. It's book one in the series. And she is 39 years old. It takes place in Tucson, Arizona. So a very warm location, which is why it felt more spring summery to me. And she's there because her dad's about to have an impending knee surgery. She's kind of mingling with her mom. It's like social group at the retirement community and unfortunately a local tart and business owner is found dead and Marcy gets involved and that's kind of the general premise. There's also an adorable golden retriever in this series. She's also kind of falling in love with Tucson Valley and finding hey I might actually want to live here. It's a nice change of pace. She's befriending people and then also solving this mystery. So I'm really excited for this. It looks very summery to me so I thought this was a good time of year to pick it up. From a series that I have been loving, the Tea Shop Mystery Series by Laura Child. This one is called Shades of Earl Grey. So our main character in this is Indigo Tea Shop owner Theodosa Browning. She is in a lovely character. She's got a very formal language. She's very intelligent. I really love her character. And in this one there's like an engagement party and like soiree, but the groom meets a freak accident and there's this heirloom of Marie Antoinette that goes missing. But when Theodosa goes to the police, they kind of brush her off and she's like, well that's not gonna do. I'm gonna take care of it myself. So I'm so excited for this. I love the covers for this. I mean, they're so pretty. The writing was so just 
like a little more formal but really lovely really beautiful very descriptive i really enjoyed book one so i can't wait to continue on with these characters one that i have been dying to get into and start the series is mango mambo and murder by raquel v reyes this is the caribbean kitchen mystery series so our main character in this is miriam and she moves from new york to miami she's going through like a divorce but she's really trying to put her son first and her friend helps her get this job on like a tv show presenting like food and stuff like that and shortly after that she she goes to like this women's luncheon and someone ends up dying at the luncheon i feel like the synopsis gives some other stuff away so i'm just gonna cut it there but that's the general premise i'm really excited to read more about caribbean food i don't know too much about it but it sounds amazing and i'm really excited for the fact that she's a mom i feel like mom sleuths and cozies are amazing so i can't wait to read this another one that's really made my list is the second in the lobster shack mystery series it's called against the claw this is by sherry randall who's also known known as Mary Allen. She writes the Ice Cream Shop mystery series that I adore. And our main character in this is Allie. She's a ballerina who was injured like at work. So she's back home at her aunt's lobster shack helping out. And her aunt needs more help than ever because they're about to expand into catering. And one day Allie is walking along the side of the beach and she actually stumbles across the body of a young woman. So that's kind of our basic premise for this. I really like the fact that she is an ex-ballerina. That's a very unique career. I haven't really seen a cozy. I love her relationship with her aunt and I just love Mary Allen slash Sari Randall's writing style so I'm very excited to get into book two of this. I don't know if this one takes place during summer but I just I want to get into it so it's making my TBR. And another one I'm so excited for. I think this one came out in October. It's called Glory B, a Glory Broussard mystery by Danielle Arcano. and one this cover. Um, it's a library one so it's a little bright but how stunning is the design of this cover. It's everything. It's beautiful. It's amazing. I cannot wait. So our main character in this is Glory and she is described as like a woman of a certain age and I personally love sleuths that are a little bit on the older side. I think they are so witty and wise and incredible a lot of times and I love that. Well one day after church she's sitting in like a cafe or something eating and she overhears some people talking about how her best friend who is a nun um, ended their own life. And she is flabbergasted. She's like, there is no way. She could not believe it. She brings her concerns to the police, but she's kind of brushed off again. And she decides to investigate the, what she thinks is a murder herself. And what I like how it says it here. As a black woman of a certain age who grew up in a segregated Louisiana, Glory is used to being minimized and overlooked, but she's determined to make her presence known as the case leads her deep into a web of intrigue she never realized Lafayette could Harbor, and this is a debut. I can't wait. This cover is stunning. The plot line for this sounds fascinating. I cannot wait for this. Alright, so jumping into thrillers here, I have quite a few, and the first one I'm very intimidated by. It's called Pieces of Her by Karen Slaughter. So I've heard some good things about this author, but this book is 600 pages and it's a thriller. I have never read a thriller that was more than like 400 some pages and oftentimes I find that when they're over 400 pages the author I feel like maybe they could have cut down a little bit and it would have made the pacing better. So the fact that this is 600 pages I don't know. We're gonna just find out though. I'm putting it on this TBR to kind of give myself some push to read it. And this one involves a mother-daughter relationship. Our main character is Andrea and she knows everything about her mother. They have a great relationship. Her mother Laura is like a speech pathologist. She's really kind and one day the two of them are at a mall and she sees her mother confront someone who's like committing a crime and a different part of her is revealed. And it turns out that for over 30 years her mother Laura has been hiding from her past. And this is a story of Andrea trying to uncover that and help her mother and I'm so curious about this. I don't know much else, but it's just very interesting to me and just terrifying to think that you know someone or you think you know someone and then you find out this like huge secret, but I like that for fiction, of course. It's very interesting to read about. So I'm excited. I've never read this author before. I'm a little intimidated by the fact that this is 600 pages for a thriller. That seems like a lot, but let me know if you've read this or any of the other ones. I'd love to hear your thoughts. The next one I grabbed from my library, it's called Radiant Heat. And this one is by Sarah Jane Collins. It says, after the fire, the reckoning begins. So this one felt kind of spring and summery to me because I know unfortunately a lot of areas struggle with wildfires, especially during those months. This one is 
interesting. Our main character is Allison. This takes place in Australia. She lives in the Victorian countryside and one day unfortunately a wildfire rips through the countryside destroying her home and when she comes back to what is remaining of her home there's like this red car in the driveway and inside is a dead woman holding a piece of paper with Allison's name on it and she's never met this woman before. I'm intrigued. I like little, I like tropes like that where you have like this weird connection between characters but one of them has no idea of where this person knows them from or why they were trying to get a hold of them. I love a trope like that so I'm very excited for this and this cover and kind of the theme kind of struck me as more of a spring summer sort of thriller. Then one I'm very excited to read is from Book of the Month called Listen for the Lie. So this one takes place in a small town in Texas. Our main character is Lucy and her and her best friend Savvy were best friends for a very long time. Lucy was kind of the maybe more proper one who did what she was supposed to. She ended up getting married to a very nice man who had quite a bit of money. She's got the house, she's got the ring, you know, she's got the golden life, if you will, whereas Savvy was a little more down on her luck, and she's also, if you believe the rumors, known to be popular with the guys. Well, one night, Lucy is found wandering the streets of her small Texas town, and she is covered in her best friend's blood. Now, she was never convicted of her friend's murder, but years later, people still look at her in a very negative way because of this event and she has moved on but she's now forced to come back home and confront the past because a podcast that's very popular is doing a segment on her friend's murder so she's coming back home to confront the past everything about this it's got so many tropes i love i love like best friends in a story i love the dynamics of having like two best friends from a different world i like the trope of having to go back and face the past like she's going to be doing so this sounds excellent i like podcasts in mysteries and thrillers i feel like they add a very unique element so i'm very very excited for this let me know if you got this for your book of the month whether you read it whether you liked it i'm super excited for it this next one is a loner from my mom and she said she really loved it and i know it's very popular Popular, and that is Where Are the Children by Mary Higgins Clark. And basically this one takes place with our main character Nancy who has fled the heartbreak of her first marriage. She was living in California and her children went missing. The marriage was awful. You know, things were not great. So she cuts her hair. She moves to like Cape Cod across the country. She's restarted life. She's married again. She has two beautiful children. And one day she looks outside where they were playing and only finds a red mitten, and she realizes the nightmare has begun again. Sounds absolutely terrifying. I'm not sure if this is technically a thriller, but it's definitely a suspense, and I wanted to include it because it sounds very, very scary. My mom said it was great, so I'm excited to read it. Another one I picked up a while ago at a used bookstore was What Happened to the Bennetts by Lisa Scottoline. I think I got it at a little free library, actually, but it looks very interesting. I love this cover. So this one follows our main character, Jason, who is a suburban dad, and one night he is driving home with his family, and he is forced to pull over by this, like, aggressive tailgater, and these men jump out and pull, like, weapons on them and demand the car. So, of course, they hand it over. The FBI gets involved, and they his family and him are forced into like witness protection and he decides to take some things into his own hands because he has to decide between whether he follows the law or he wants justice for his family. So very interesting. It's not my typical thriller. I'm more of like a domestic psychological thriller. This one sounds a little bit more like a, like a law I guess like legal thriller, but we're gonna see. I'm very curious. And then the last one is by Lisa Jewell. I got this at my used book sale as well. It's called I Found You and I am very excited. So this kind of follows multiple points of views. So we have a British seaside town where a woman finds this young man who's like sitting on a bench and he's kind of disturbed or like off in some way. And then in the London suburbs we have Lily who one day her husband doesn't return home and when she talks to the police and like reports this, they tell her that her husband doesn't exist. That alone was enough to catch my attention. I was like, oh, that would, I, that's a horror story right there. And then another timeline is 23 years before this, we have this couple who is on the beach and they come across this young man who's very interested in the wife and it makes the husband very uneasy and they're trying to figure out why. So multiple storylines. I'm curious to see how they all come together. Lisa Jewell has written some really big hits for me in the past. So I'm so excited to read more of her books and I feel like this is gonna be a winner. 
And then last but not least, I wanted to share this nonfiction I picked up from my library that just sounds so fun. And I feel like if you are somebody who maybe is like me, or maybe you have a, like you're a bit on the artistic side, maybe you have a lot of hobbies, maybe you're a freelancer like me and you have a lot of things you like to dabble in, this one might be appealing to you. It's called The Renaissance Soul by Margaret Lubinstein. It's life designed for people with too many passions to just pick one. And I feel this to my very core. I think the idea of a renaissance soul is like, think people like Leonardo da Vinci, not that I'm comparing myself to him or anything, but just that he had so many interests and passions and he didn't let it limit him because a lot of times, I think in our society, it's very strongly recommended to niche down and go into a very specific field to be a specialist. And that's great for so many people and for so many fields like maybe you really need that specialty but other ones I feel like you can dabble in multiple things like for me as a freelance writer I write for multiple niches at times and that keeps it interesting it keeps me engaged I really really enjoy that and then I have like my YouTube channel and this book's supposed to be kind of a guide for people like that who have a lot of hobbies a lot of interests maybe don't really know what to do with themselves and I'm just really excited to read this. So that is my spring TBR. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know down below what is on your spring TBR. What are you most excited to be reading this, you know, April, March, May. I'm so excited for the nicer weather as much as I love the holidays and I'll see you guys in my next video. If you haven't hit subscribe, please do. I post new book content every week on this channel, especially within the mystery and thriller genres. So if you like anything with like a mystery and at its core, you'll like this channel. So I hope you'll stick around and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!